Now, the one of the problems that I had with this canvas was that uh, I'm not sure if it is if it has the gesso coat. I I think it uh, I think it does. It, we are we are I guessing guess. about gesso. Yes. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Stationery Test Drive, where every week we take humble tools and exotic tools and strange pieces of stationery, and we make things with them. I am Vishal. This is Minjal. I am Samir, and this week we are going to be looking at canvas and this particular canvas board by Camlin uh, Kokuyo under the Camel brand. And what we need to see in this episode uh, is this nice hard. Piece of board uh, with some canvas stretched on it and acrylic priming and acid free. Uh, it's eight by eight inches or around twenty by twenty centimeters. Uh, so fits well within the A range. I think that's why we liked it. We we picked this one over larger canvases or smaller mm-hmm. canvases even just for. It's a nice size. It's just about the size of a, a hand if you stretch it out. Um, and what we did with it, since we might as well get into that. Um, here's mine. Uh, so I am by no means or any definition a painter. I do some digital things that you could, I guess, call painting, but uh, I not really have much uh, experience with it. Uh, despite this, I have hundreds of uh, tubes of paint and. Dozens of brushes accrued over the years, and I use some of them on this. Um, I had a good time. I know it doesn't really look like much. It doesn't look like much to me, but um, yeah, this was fun. Uh, if you've never used canvas, I would suggest starting here. Start at uh, something like this. Uh, it's. <laughs> I think one of the things I liked about it is that the board actually helps. Um, I've used. I use those those sort of fully uh, you know stretched out uh, canvases before that have you know uh, stre- uh, canvas stretched on yeah, the frame. Yeah, see, I don't know most of the ter- terminology here, so you're going you guys are going to have to help me out with this stuff. This is not your standard framed piece of canvas. No, I mean uh, to begin with, canvas of course is essentially just a fabric. It's cotton mostly. It's cotton these days. It has a long history of being made from other things. Um, what we have here is, of course, a piece of cotton canvas that's stretched on a board. The other common thing is for canvas to be stretched on a frame, in which case the fabric in the middle is kind of just loose and hanging. That was the problem I had with previous attempts, and this one was nice because it was kind of you know like a piece of paper in terms of you could kind of push into it a bit more. Uh, and you don't have to worry about your because the brush is a floppy thing. Most canvases are kind of floppy. This one mm. was not. This is a really great beginner's tool. Um, See, I think we have to consider ourselves fairly lucky because from what I've read, uh, you know, firstly, canvases were very, very expensive. Oh yeah. Um, in the earlier days, and uh, canvases were actually not even available. So, um, in the ancient times, uh, uh, most painters or artists. Would paint on um, surfaces like you know uh, oak, mm. you know which were kind of known for their stability and uh, rigidity. Wood panels. Uh, so wooden panels were popular, and they were actually followed by uh, vellum mm. or um, cowhide. Right. Uh, so it was only sometime in the 16th century that uh, linen and uh, hemp, you know, uh, was uh, actually also introduced as uh, you know a medium on which uh, it was easier to paint. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was also the um, I read that it was also you know thick enough that it was the same uh, material that was also used to make the sails, right? Uh, um, or the the ships. These are this is not exactly the kind of cloth that you would wear or make a dress out of. It's it's extremely rough and. Uh, but the the thing is, as as Menjal is saying, the the cloth or the fabric that's used on this has changed immensely over well hmm. millennia. Um, the idea of painting on cloth is not that new, mm. like most things. So canvas so as, a, as a painting medium has existed for two or three thousand years. It's as old as cloth, I'm assuming. <laughs> yes, but the problem is that when you paint directly on cloth using oil-based 
paints. Ah, it's, it's... You end up with cloth that is uh, very, very biologically heavy. Uh, mm. It immediately, within a decade or so, catches uh, various kinds of bacteria, fungus, and those cloths just do not survive. So, we probably have an entire history of painting on cloth which has been completely lost to us. Mm. Um, when cloth started being popularly used in the way that we now use them was when linen came into the picture and when as Minjal said when linen sails were a thing that were being made a lot right. and uh, Venice being the center of shipping used to make some of the best linen sails and, and that's where some of the art uh, started because people would paint on those sails and then the idea of painting onto cloth and painting onto canvas sort of grew from there so in in a wonderful uh, juxtaposition of trade and happenstance uh, artists there used what they had and they made nice things with this minjal what did you make with this because i know it's nice i've seen it so let's show it to the good people at home ah that is superb and that is the kind of control and and evenness that i could only hope to get from this <laughs> No, I mean, as somebody who does calligraphy, I would really wish I could do something a little more abstract. <laughs> so, you know, there you go. It wasn't planned, I will tell you that much. Uh, I've used uh, the Windsor and Newton uh, professional um, paint uh, tubes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a couple of uh, background washes. And uh, then the white, uh, you know, they have a couple of uh, different shades of white. So I've used uh, the titanium shade which gives you like this really nice thick, um, you know, an opaque kind of finish. Yeah. Now, the one of the problems that I had with this canvas was that uh, I'm not sure if it is, if it has the gesso coat. I, I think it, uh, I think it does. It, we are, we are guessing guess. about gesso. <laughs> yes, I, I guess it does. Now, uh, also, it's not the smoothest surface to, to paint on. Right. So, you know, if, if you, I don't know if the camera can see it, but, you know, there are a lot of gaps when you're trying to paint. I, Correct. I, I like that, actually, because it adds to the texture. It adds to yeah, the so, uniqueness of it. Uh, so, but so, there are a couple of issues here. Um, yes, the, the board is essentially what causes the texture. Obviously, the texture comes from the fabric, but because uh, this is stretched and glued onto the board. Right. right. So, it makes the fabric... Um, not flexible. The mm. thing that Vishal liked about it, which is that it... Essentially, this behaves very much like an old school uh, wood panel painting mm. in that you don't have a flexible piece of cloth to work on. But because the cloth is glued down, it makes every piece of this texture very apparent. Mm. Which can be great for, I think, things like... Uh, although Minjal may not have enjoyed working on it, the effect that it I, gives visually I love is, it. is beautiful. So... You can get much smoother results on a canvas that's stretched on a frame. Mm. Right. Because there you wouldn't have the glue sitting underneath it and adding that sort of extra texture. Maybe mm. we try that at some point. Mm. Yeah. Because I have tried, I do this every few years. That's how I have the hundreds of brushes and uh, paints, tubes. Uh, I have tried free canvas in the sense that it just came in a uh, set of sheets like, mm. uh, like you would get a, uh, a sketch pad. Yeah. Um, and that was fun to use. But yes, there you could get more even coats, more... Um, that was the thing that I was surprised by this. I didn't put down many coats, but uh, the texture of this just kept showing through. And uh, that's not the case with canvas. That's just kind of free. Yeah. That's uh, not been stretched even. Uh, and we should check out all of those as well. Uh, Minjan mentioned paint. And that's, the I guess, such an essential part of paint, of the thing that... Uh, these are the ones I use. These are old uh, Daler Rowney things that are about like five or six years old, I would say. Uh, but they were still good. Uh, and I guess that's uh, one endorsement for buying higher quality paints uh, in even bigger tubes like this. These were literally five years old and I could just shake them up a bit and squirt them out and they're fine. The, the realization with canvas is that if you want to do, uh, you know, professional level, uh, you know, of work, then you have to spend on a canvas uh, that is actually a little more uh, hmm. professional level. This mm -hmm. is um, available for 45 rupees uh, in India. Yeah. And, it's not uh, even a dollar. It's not even a dollar and it's mostly, uh, you know, like a student friendly, uh, you know, canvas board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a, in a strange sort of uh, connection, I think... 
what matters as far as the quality of the canvas is concerned is actually the quality of the fabric that goes onto it. Mm. So cheap canvases like this, which are brilliant. I mean, I have to say that when we were growing up, you couldn't think of affording a canvas. Or even a canvas board, which existed, but were mostly imported and from brands like this. Yeah, so the reason that you have these extremely affordable uh, canvases these days is because you can have a very... A uh, low grade cotton fabric that's used for the canvas. Now, literally, this is very similar to uh, bed linen, in that what you get for a cheap canvas is probably something with a lot, uh, a lot looser of a weave and less of a thread count. Mm. People who are familiar with bed sheets will know this. A higher thread count is a more sort of luxurious fabric. Mm. So you will still get, you know, Taylor Rowney canvases or Windsor Newton canvases, which are much more professional, Mm. which cost easily 10, 20 times what we paid for this and will have a much better fabric on it. And that's what gives that sort of professional quality. So it's both the the quality of the fabric that goes on the canvas and also the paint that adds to that. Mm. The weird connection with bed sheets that I brought up is that... um, Bed sheets were actually used as um, test canvases by a lot of artists through history. The reason that you don't know about it is because bed sheets were not guessoed. Ah. And therefore, they never survived beyond a few decades. And can someone explain gesso to me? Because I sort of know, but... Yeah, so essentially modern uh, canvases are coated with actually something very much like this. It's probably just a a white acrylic paint, Mm. which essentially protects all the actual fibers in the cloth from any paint that goes onto it. Does it impregnate the cloth or is it on top? It it sort impregnates of part of it, but it essentially puts a protective layer between the cloth and the painting. And acrylic itself is a polymer polymerizing uh, right. thing. Now, the, the thing, the reason we don't have ancient paintings on cloth is because they did not gesso it. Now, the, the term gesso is become kind of a general term. We Even something like this is said to be acrylic gessoed. Uh, so it's become a general term for protecting the, the fabric of the canvas from the paints. Earlier, before acrylic existed, there was actually a medium called gesso, which still exists. And that's a mixture of a binder with chalk. Mm. So something like a modern gouache, I guess. Mm-hmm. And that medium was applied onto the canvas till it kind of filled in all the gaps and coated it so that the paint would sit on top of mm-hmm. that chalk. So did artists also use egg uh, tempera as like a background wash? As a background wash, I'm not sure. Egg right? tempera was used as, as, a, a binding. as a binding medium for for the pigment. pigment. So, for so they became a, f- a form of paint. So tempera paints are okay. based on an, on an egg. In some way, the gesso almost takes it halfway to a fresco in that it's like... Uh, yeah, you are, you are almost painting on a wall. Just like a canvas board is, you are almost painting on a wood panel. Hmm. Um, so essentially, yes, bed sheets used to be used for um, sketches. So th- people like Van Gogh would actually have had hundreds of paintings on bed sheets because they were the cheapest thing you could buy that you could paint on. Hmm. Actual canvases were expensive, even up to the time of, uh, well, our lifetime. Our lifetime. But certainly when uh, someone like Rembrandt or someone like um, Van Gogh were painting, a decent sized canvas was worth one or two weeks of pay. That's how much it cost. Hmm. So it's not something you could just waste on, on trying things out with. Uh, do you want to show us what you uh, came up with? What I came up with was this completely mixed media. <laughs> right. We've been talking about so many, so many different mixes of things. You have mixed the most media on top of the already mixed canvas. Were any bed sheets used in the <laughs> making of this canvas? I don't think so, but uh, maybe we can try that at some point. This is a mixture of um, acrylic paints for a lot of the colors. It is actually a very rudimentary form of decoupage for some of this flat color and this sort of photographic bit. What is decoupage? So decoupage is where you take printed material on paper, cut it up and then stick it onto surfaces, including canvas. But it's also used on things like bottles and uh, you know uh, actual objects that you can decorate. 
then you coat it with a in modern times you coat it with an acrylic um, medium which is called uh, what's popularly the the brand Mod Podge is popular for okay but it's essentially a decoupage medium which is an acrylic uh, adhesive of sorts which when it dries up is transparent okay so what i ended up doing since i didn't have Mod Podge is actually to use um, an acrylic white glue with a bit of water and that was what i used to coat it and sort of impregnated into the canvas good old fans of art attack will be very familiar with this technique exactly so my piece includes the acrylic paints the decoupage and then also uh, some posca acrylic paint pens right because when we covered the posca a few weeks ago please check that episode out uh, we talked about how it was in the essence a paint marker um good of you to remember that because i did not i just used uh, whatever paint brushes and uh, i i tried to do in my head i wanted one of two things i either wanted to do bob ross because obviously you know if, if you're a person of our age and who's been on the internet for a while you know bob ross and i thought of doing a paint a uh, portrait which is what we usually do and i kind of ended up with both sort of if you can tell that from this mess but uh, i think your uh, your flinging tentacles battling with each other is is uh, much more of a i i believe this is the kind of image where uh, uh, you know there are there are friends we have who see images like this that we make and ask us what we are on um i think what what these all need at this point is for us to write one of those flowery little you know cards with the uh, 12 point helvetica on them uh with the title of the piece probably untitled number whatever uh and a nice long uh meandering completely nonsensical paragraph about the themes of this piece so i will commission one of those from each of you and we will put them up on the screen for so, people um, to read in 4k from nonsense to a little more like sensible questions that i hmm. had um you know when i actually used the canvas first um it was a little intimidating because when you go to buy a canvas in any regular um you know art shop they will uh, you know you're asking for a canvas and they will sell you a gesso they will send you, sell you a varnish they will sell you you know multiple brushes multiple paints mm. so a uh, canvas uh, or painting on canvas really i think people tend to complicate it and make it so um uh, you know they make it very professional sounding and you um, know it sometimes it just also acts as a deterrent because you feel like you know i don't have a varnish and this is not a finished piece mm. speaking as someone who creates things in many mediums now over the years uh, the one thing i find common with a lot of uh, creative mediums is that there is a parabolic curve of if you can imagine a parabolic curve here of uh, of simplicity to gear uh, at the start you're a novice you will be like a child let's say and you just get a piece of canvas or a bed sheet or whatever and some kind of crayon or something and then you put it on or a pa- or whatever paints you don't even know what paints are you don't know watercolor or acrylic or whatever you just know paints uh, then when you become a hobbyist and like you if you go into a store as a you know the stores entire purpose is in some ways not to sell you art things it's to sell you things uh, so you will it's it's called in in especially in photography circles it's called gear acquisition syndrome where mm. when you buy one camera then you need two cameras then you need a lens then you need a tripod then you need lighting then you need uh, flags to cut the lighting then you need mm. like a better computer to edit the things and then the parabola comes back down to where your a professional let's say or even a, an advanced hobbyist where sometimes you just pick up one thing and one brush and two and a half colors which is sort of what i did and i'm not claiming to be an advanced artist in this but i approached it the way i would a illustration where i am fairly advanced uh and yeah you get the the curve comes back down to enjoying things through simplicity i think this is a simple uh object and a very cheap one but not a bad one and i think w- what we need to realize is that when we today are buying a, a canvas board that's 45 rupees we are pretty much doing what someone else would have done 200 years ago which was doing a sketch on a bed sheet mm. like 
this is cheaper than a bed sheet today yes we have no idea if this will archive archivally whether it will so last so a lot of a lot of that equipment and add-ons and varnish and all of that which is being sold to you is more for when you are using like a professional canvas which costs 20 times this hmm. and then you want it to last forever you want it to be perfect you want it to be protected hmm. and they want to sell you some varnish let's not so, you know forget so there's that. always that uh the fact that we have actual canvas to whatever degree and to whatever level of quality that we can paint on at such a low cost i mean that's just a great thing that we have access to now uh and i am very glad for it because i growing up canvas was something that was kind of out of the ordinary and out of your reach unless you were very serious about art yeah because you you learn to paint with acrylics and they were just called poster colors or you your water colors and then you would put them on really cheap school stationery paper which is entirely not good for painting the great thing like i said at the top of this it didn't move it didn't stretch it didn't warp it's just there it dries in a few hours you can dry between coats because it's acrylic and it's sort of going into a medium that just soaks it up and just dries out hmm. um it's really fun it's a fun use of 45 rupees I, that that much is true so yes we have been artistic uh, we have tried this out i definitely would like to do more on canvas it's hmm. uh, painting and canvas in general is something like vishal which i have stayed away from because yeah. it's always had a certain um amount of effort involved which was a- a- and layout i mean you have to have you know the water the clean water the brushes everything has to be set up yeah. right it it takes a lot more than me just whipping out a sketchbook and my favorite pen and just going at it for 20 minutes there's That's true. yeah there is at least some kind of prep up which is why people have studios and you know good for them but obviously the the results have a certain finish to them that you just can't get any other way hmm even in something like uh, calligraphy which you know you may not enjoy all these little spots and textural bits but i really do um I, even mine as much as it's just kind of i think it's just thrown together i do enjoy the chaos of a lot of this which i would not be able to get with any other medium including digital because i have tried some a lot of people are digital painters now uh and yes it is you can do wonderful things with that but I think once in a while you should get back to basics and you know paint some happy little clouds uh and so swishes in we we'd say that this is definitely worth uh buying it's worth 45 absolutely. rupees absolutely <laughs> because it's it's just so inexpensive let's say even if you'd had none of the things which you'd need which is basically some kind of paint some kind of canvas and some kind of uh, brush you could get that done in under 200 rupees these days yeah Uh, a couple of dollars and we're talking here as adults we're not just saying oh you know obviously you can give this to your kids they'll have a great time um but yeah go uh, go and get one of these don't wait to you know sign up for some weekend class or things like that maybe you want to do that sure but try one of these out first see if you actually enjoy it because um like samir said we try i don't really paint much i try once every few years and I don't really like it that much but this is a great way to get into it. And if you think that this is something that's only for kids and not adult enough, let me inform you that um, a canvas is called a canvas because it used to be made from hemp, hemp and the word comes from the same word as cannabis. So there's always that. <laughs> I, on that note I I don't think we have anything else to add uh, other than to please uh follow us on youtube here like subscribe um follow us on social media at the links that we have put on screen and the ones in the description uh and do subscribe to the inky memo newsletter where we have several tales of of how uh, stationery has been made how uh, it continues to innovate we will continue to innovate in some form or the other with some kind of tool uh, as we have teased we are going to do an episode on this little thing um in a different way than on this canvas so stay tuned for that uh until then i'm vishal i'm samir this is ninjal we smoke those boards 
starting recording on the Zoom for episode 28, which is the Canvas, Camlin, Camel, Camlin, Kokoyo, Camel, Canvas board. Can you delete that snippet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that calligraph, calligraph. <laughs>